For those that are looking for more information on the home coverages that you need to carry for your house insurance, whether you just bought a house or you've owned a house for a while and you're just curious on what the coverages should be, we're going to talk about there's two pieces. There's coverage B and coverage C. If you're looking more of an overall guide to go over every specific coverage, I'll link a video at the end that will actually go specifically into each piece one at a time. The main things that you got to think about is coverage B. That's other structures. That's anything that's not attached to the home. So if you have your standard coverage A, that's your dwelling, and that piece is going to cover the inside of the house, the walls, the roof, the uh, countertops, everything that you have in the home is covered. But on a home policy, it doesn't just end there. What about the building that's in the yard? What about the gazebo? What about the uh, porch or the uh, pool that's 10 feet away from the home? Those are considered other structures. You've got to be a little bit careful when you're working with certain companies because some companies default to what we call a 2% coverage and 2% of your dwelling A. That dwelling A, if it's a $200,000 house, 2% is only $4,000. $4,000 isn't going to be enough to replace anything significant on your home. You got to also think, do I have a fence? If I do, I've got to cover the cost of that. Today's cost of lumber and wood, and as we all saw, prices have gone up quite a bit, are way more expensive than what we expected. So you've got to plan those accordingly as far as what you would need for coverage. Most companies, the right ones at least, if you're with the right agent, will default to 10%. And 10% is usually where people are comfortable with, where if you have a $200,000 house, now you've got $20,000. That way, if you have a one-car stall garage and it's around what it should be, then you can cover that. Most policies won't necessarily let you lower that coverage because it's a default. They do percentages based off of that coverage A. Other policies will let you raise that coverage so that you have more of it in case you have a large outbuilding. Fence, shed, if you have a barn, a pole barn, or anything like that, those are going to need a lot more coverage than what your typical policy is going to carry. This is where the agent comes into play. If you're working with a specific agent, I would encourage you to start a conversation with them because there is a couple different ways that this can go. If you're not working with an agent, I'll put a link in the description below where we work with several agents as well as mortgage brokers and realtors. So if you're kind of in that market as far as the home goes, definitely let us know in the comments below or fill out the form and we'll get in touch. In the meantime, that separate path that you can take is if you're going to have a large structure. Some policies, and the good ones I'll say, allow you to break those off. You can have separate structures individually covered on your home policy. Yes, it doesn't really make a huge difference if you don't label it a pole barn. You can call it an other structure and have $100,000 worth of coverage, and nine times out of ten, you're fine. But for those of you that want the specific coverage for the specific scenarios, you can have actual coverages for those structures. Well, Mark, what about the structure that isn't good? What if I have one falling over or that is just in bad shape? That's a perfect question. So there are some companies, not all of them, but they'll allow you to exclude those structures so you don't have to pay the extra cost for those pieces. Once again, that depends on the agents that you work with and the companies or the carriers that they work with with their fit. Some agents only work with one company. Other agents like us, we work with multiple companies. So when you do a quote, they're doing several different companies and checking because you're not a fit for every one of them. That's why the prices go up and down so much. That leads us into the next set of coverages, which is coverage C. Coverage C is super important because it's your personal property. That's your belongings, your TV, your couch, your shoes. Anything that you personally own is your coverage C. There's a big piece that I'll tell you that you need to always have on that policy. What a lot of people don't realize is the valuation of your items is depending on how old they are. So when you have a total loss claim like we had with one of our customers, they had to write down every single item that they owned. And it's a little bit tough because you've got to literally write out on pieces of paper, here was my couch, here's how much I paid for it, here's a receipt if I have it. Also, here is the year that I bought it, so it's this year old. And if you have just the standard coverage, which I never recommend, then that couch is worth whatever that is valued at that year. So a $3,000 couch, 12 years later, might only be worth $1,000, if that. The opposite of that is what we call full replacement cost. And what full replacement cost is essentially us stating that we don't want to mess with all of this. You still have to write down your items and, and do all of that stuff. But what they're going to do is they're going to take those model numbers if they can grab them and find the newest version of that item today. So now your adjuster is going to take the work and start looking at different stores and different locations. Okay, now that Ashley Furniture couch was about 3000 when I bought it. It was only worth 1000 when the claim happened, 
but because I have full replacement cost, I get whatever that part or that cost is in the store. If that is now a $5,000 couch, I get the $5,000 to replace that couch. And no, they're not just gonna give you a couch. They're gonna give you the money that goes towards the couch. So you essentially get to choose what you do with it. If you wanna upgrade or downgrade, that's where that coverage comes into play. You'll notice that that coverage is commonly 70% of coverage A. So if you have a $200,000 house, it's not uncommon for you to see $140,000 worth of personal property. It can vary and you can lower and raise it depending on the coverage that the companies allow. Each one's different, but you've got to think about how much stuff do I own? One of the smarter things that I've seen a few clients do is to walk around your house with a video and just put that video somewhere online where people can't see it. So kind of vault it for yourself so that you have access in the future if you ever wanna know what items you have in your house. I personally focus on some of the more valuable items, and we'll talk about those here in just a moment, but those pieces that I think are worth a little bit more that I don't wanna forget. No one's gonna itemize their entire house, although if you do, great, more power to you. You've got a list and it makes it simple, but the odds of you actually needing that are so low that insurance companies are commonly expecting not to have those pieces. So they're gonna work with you and try to work through that piece to get you the right coverage for that scenario. Now I mentioned that there was something that we also have to think about. Some items on that coverage seat is excluded. So having that personal property may not cover you correctly. If you have items that are worth more than roughly $1,000 to $1,500, that's really the mental thought of when you know that it's probably not covered correctly. If you have more commonly jewelry, furs, watches, computers, camera equipments, and guns, those are like the main pieces. If any of those items on most policies are more than $1,500, that's the cap. So your standard home policy, whether you do full replacement or not, isn't gonna cover that additional cost. They do that because those are the most common things and they wanna make sure that you don't have a customer that has $500,000 worth of jewelry and whatnot and just wants it covered. In that scenario, what you need to do is you need to add one of two different coverages. You can do blanket and you can do schedule. So a blanket policy is where we just want more coverage. If the $1,500 limit was enough, typically a blanket will up it to 2,500, sometimes even 5,000 depending on the company you go with each specific item has that much up to the limit that you set. If you have $50,000 worth of jewelry, then you would state, I want blanket coverage on jewelry, 50,000, make sure it covers the right amount per item, and I'm good. If that's still not enough per item, let's say you have a really nice wedding ring. In that case, you're going to schedule that onto your policy to say, hey, I have a specific ring that's worth X amount of dollars. If it's worth that, now you can schedule it individually as a covered item, just like you would if you went to the jeweler. There is one thing that you gotta be a little bit careful to knowledge of and not getting too deep into it, but if it's more than $25,000, now there's some extra hurdles that you have to go through. You have to show the proof of the value every three years. You have to show whether it's in a vault or a bank essentially, or if it's in your home, and you have to actually make sure that you have the very descriptive description of that actual item. So next time you're working on your insurance policy, when you see those coverage B, other structures in the coverage C, personal property, make sure you have the right agent that can discuss that with you. For those of you that need to know a little bit more about that, the next step that you're gonna to wanna to take is to check out the Insurance Guide 101. We go over coverage A, B, C, D, E, and F, the main pieces of a home policy. I'm gonna link that video right here for you to check out. Go ahead and check it out. Otherwise, if you have questions, put them in the comments below. I'm Mark with Valor Insurance. We'll see you soon.